good Tuesday morning. And wow, look at the driveway. Come on, babies. Come on. Just keeps on getting emptier and emptier. Hey, welcome to Ice Age TV. The morning conversations that I think some like to hear. Yeah, the dogs are constipated. It just isn't a pretty picture here at Ice Age TV. I mean, literally and physically. Yeah, wow. Hey, beautiful morning. It's actually supposed to warm up. So the cold front's kind of moved through, so it's not too bad. And yeah, for those who are just first time watching Ice Age TV and my morning conversations, I just kind of talk about things in general and some of it's about the cars, economy, yeah, even politics. That's where it's all gone because uh, for what's going on, I think to myself, it's. I say this every day, what am I going to talk about today? And how deep does it get, right? And I just thought to myself today, is, is is the word, I mean, I said to myself last night, boy, wouldn't it be nice to have like the success story video? I do have a lot of those, because that, right? But then I, I think the conversation should be about failure. I mean, more than ever, failure. I just thought, wow, what is going on in this country? Come on, let's go. I mean, I in our country, come on, Ginger. Get on back here. I, more than ever, don't you just hear failure stories, it seems like? Everything seems to be, like, negative. Come on, pups. Come on, Ginger. Come on. Come on, Scout. Come on. I mean, it's incredible to think about, you know, the, what's the main theme? All right. The projects. Yeah, yesterday, if you watched my video, it is so cool. I found this Bluetooth uh, electronic brake controller where you can plug it into the back of your, uh, your hitch. And you don't have to put a brake, a real electric brake controller, into your actual uh, vehicle. And it just takes away a lot of the hassle. And the reason I've, I'm talking about this is because I'm heading out and I'm going to Tennessee. Now the debate is, so I take the, the Braptor with the, uh, the motorcycle trailer way over there. Or do I take the new F-150 race truck? This thing is so much fun. This truck is a blast. I mean, it's a blast. <laughs> I can't emphasize enough. I was even looking at my Shelby Super Snake truck last night, thinking to myself, wow, this truck, I mean, borderline half the money is a much funner truck. Yes, yeah, got all the other bikes. I have to clean out my trailers. Anybody need a motorcycle? Yeah, need a motorcycle? I got some motorcycles. That one's for sale. Those are, I mean, just, you know, the list goes on and on and on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got to get, I got to get everything on org or work. Then I get everything ordered in to get the truck and trailer loaded up. And I can say that Bluetooth uh, capability electric brake, that's huge. I mean, not, not, not this, this truck, this truck doesn't have electric brake on it. And they're back ordering on the uh, electric brake, factory electric brake. And that's a 2022, the have the right plug yet for it so a bluetooth electric brake controller go to my channel and look for that video i sent yesterday it's a deal maker for you not a deal breaker all right dogs let's go cold because i don't leave the heat on all night but last night or yesterday it got so cold it automatically turned on so that's pretty cool so you can see it's not as cold but it's cold as we got the crew here and I'm part of the crew as I get my uh, my day going here. And gotta get a little heaters. Got a little heater down here below because it's just cold. All right, so I got to think of myself yesterday. Boy, where are the success stories? And I was really thinking to myself, you know, change up the tone of the video because everybody's riding off the negativity. But I thought to myself, I, I just, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to talk about the failures because it's ridiculous. It's beyond ridiculous of where we are right now is what's going on. I mean, I just sometimes wonder if people really stop. People don't. People, here's, the, here's the challenge of life. I'm no different than you. You have to get up every day. You have to go to work. You have family. You have challenges. It list goes on and on. People have health challenges. People have financial challenges. People have relationship problems, you know, challenges. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So for us as an individual, 
you can't, it's like you're, you're focused on yourself. Yeah, you, you need to be focused on yourself because that's nobody else can take care of you, even though uh, the, the media and certain powers to be want to make you think that they will take care of you, which is just beyond believable. So, for me, I'm just trying to think to myself, wow, you know, is anybody really... Did anybody, the midterms to me was an eye-opener that what I just said to you is exactly what's going on. People are so caught up in their own world and their own challenges, they don't have time to really focus on other people creating even more challenges. Yes. So for us, we all live our own, our own world, and and we don't want to live. We, you know, most of us don't want to tell people how to live their life. I mean, there are people who do want to do that, but I think most people don't really want to do that. They, everybody wants to help. And sincerely, I think most of you want to help others, but it goes to, there's a fine line there of how far that goes. Yeah. No good deed goes unpunished is my dad's favorite saying. And, and boy, if that is not so doggone true. If you've been around long, around long enough, you know that story too well. So once again, I was thinking, okay, well, you know what? Let's talk about failures. And I think to myself, we got to use the car industry because I'm to car theme channel and people here, you know, I have no idea... You know, how many people have maybe said, I'm not watching this guy's show anymore because he's gotten too political. But, okay, well, I, don't, I don't care. I don't get paid. I mean, sincerely, I don't get paid. I have no background people working for me to tell me what to say today. I have no script in front of me to tell me what to say today. I'm just trying to relate to you as an individual how we all have common sense. And if you just can slow down for a bit and start looking around, you'll start realizing, wow, it's just beyond believable how blind people are, which we are. People are blind. So, you know, let's just look at the car industry. The failure, the failure of the car industry. Look at Carvana. What is the main conversation? Freaking your advocate alliance, whatever, I don't even know, the YAA guy, he's, he and his son are right up the road from where I am, basically, in the Maryland. They're over there in Bethesda, Maryland. And they do live shows. And all the conversations are day in, day out is the used car market has failed, Carvana has failed. Um, you know, I mean, that, that's the main theme every day. Every day is like the car markets have failed, that the used car market is tanked, uh, and all the used car dealers and the car dealerships and blah, blah, blah. It's all about failure. That's the content. And people by the droves watch the content. I mean, I give the guys credit, but they have like 20 people behind the scenes feeding them the content. So, you know, it's not as if, and they've got a nice channel. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not by any means. I think they get a nice channel. I think it's a nice father-son thing, and it's it's nice to listen to. So anybody that knows them thinks I'm trying to be uh, make them sound like they're failures. Not no, they got great success and they're doing very well. But the pro point is, they're just sharing information of what's going on in the country, which is failures. They're not creating it; they're just sharing the information. So you just look at a Carvana, and even for me, over a year ago, two years ago, when I saw a room and. Uh, get your VIN and all these wholesalers wanting to pay you premium price for used cars. Even me, I was like, how long is this going to last? Is this going to turn into a fiasco? The average person even knew it's going to turn into a fiasco. Yet, uh, Carvana's stock was like $198 stock worth $65 billion just a year ago. It's now a $6 stock, I believe. And the company's on the verge of going bankrupt. And they're right now selling 7,000 used cars under what they paid for them just to get cash, to stay liquid, which they can't. And then it's all the stories about how the family just says, you know, money monitored the money, and they're now laying off like 1,500 people. So, you know, the underlying message is failure, bad decisions, failure, failure. So you, just in Carvana, and we still don't even know how it's going to play out. I'm not here to say, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to go bankrupt or not. I don't know. I mean, it's easy to always say, oh, they're going bankrupt. Yeah, right. I've been around long enough where I've heard these stories where a company somehow finagles through and they don't go bankrupt. And yeah, I know companies have gone bankrupt. But then let's just look at the car industry in itself. A huge failure. The chip manufacturing, a huge failure. Nobody had the insight or the foresight, I should say, to look at the chip manufacturing capability and on how the chip manufacturers all went home and went to sleep because they felt like the whole industry was going to collapse. Everybody was told to go home and sit, sit home. Yeah, right. I mean, this is classic. Human beings are just going to go sit home. Uh-huh. 
we're, uh, how do we evolve? How, how do we get around? You think think this country is founded on people over in England just sitting around with nothing to do, and they just sat around and did nothing? I mean, it's beyond believable how people think that, that tons of people are just going to sit around and do nothing, even if they get sick. I mean, people I know that get sick, including myself. You, you keep going. You don't go just lay in bed unless you're just deathly sick or you just have something going on. But most people, there's so many people who go to work every day, they're sick. Yeah, they have a choice. They gotta pay the bills. They need money. So for me, just automotive industry, huge failure because of what I just mentioned. Carvana, used car prices, new car prices, huge failure on the new in on the, the car manufacturers of raising prices like you can't believe. Creating expensive cars never seen before. And continue to jack the rates. And then people are continuing to pay them, or are they? We don't know. I mean, it's still early in the game, but really see how, you know, you can't get a real grasp on new cars because they don't have the same inventory as they did. There's going to be like 13 million new cars sold this year versus like 40 million used cars. So the used car, the new car industry is down by a solid 5 million to 7 million sales. So, <clears throat> so anyways... So the, the, just the car industry, we've witnessed on how a huge failure, disappointment, people order cars, takes forever to get the car. Car comes in, doesn't have all the features they wanted. Uh, car comes in, then the dealer pulls a fast one, wants ADM, adjusted dealer market. Uh, the the car, car comes in, and a person waits so dang long, they don't want the car anymore. So now the car, you know, I mean, so, so to me, just in the car scenario, we have witnessed, in my eyes, in just you know, most recent times, the biggest failure of the automotive world. And it's going it's going on, I would suspect, worldwide. But just to say, stateside, we're witnessing what's going on just with Carvana. What's going on for room? I haven't heard much about them at all. I haven't heard about other... In, but, but anyway, so let's just... There, there's, there's that, without getting too radical deep into that. So now let's go to the, the pandemic. Huge failure. Huge failure, man. Huge failure. Uh, and people are arguing about this all day long. They're going to say, well, not as many people died. Okay, I'm not going down that rabbit hole. Here's the point. When I'm, th when I'm talking about a huge failure of the pandemic and how it was handled, and yes, gazillion variables on that. Am I going down that ra rabbit hole? Stop and think about the, the kids, the children. There, there are so many stories of the young people that were hugely impacted by the pandemic. So huge failure in many states on how they handled the pandemic and the kids were sent home and the schooling stopped. That's beyond believable. You have no idea. If you do your research, if you really do your research, you're going to see how many school systems failed, failed our kids big time. So in the pandemic, just that one little thing of failure, just to education. For the younger people in many, many cities and many states, sadly, the, the more you know, blue collar, the more blue states, the more rigid control factors states, you're seeing some of the highest and worst education failures in the country versus other states that try to keep things going, you know, not so much. So just an education and then college. I, I run into college students that were so bummed about their college, basically closed everything down, everyone went to online class, blah, 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 and, and a lot of kids dropped out. I mean, a lot of and then schools started mandating you had to have a vaccine, and a lot of kids didn't go to school because they didn't want to be vaccinated. So, to me, failure, failure. What are we, what are we here? What are we here, like, freaking every day of our life now? Failure. But yet, you go back to 2019, when this country seemed to be on a, on a locomotive train, kind of going down that path, and for some reason, bigger powers to be came in to play with the media machine, and the media machine started preaching to people how crappy this former administration is, how crappy the former leader of this country was, and how this other person and this other powers to be were going to build back better, a better country. Is anybody seeing a build back better country at this point? I mean, sincerely. I don't care if you're a Democrat, Republican, you're independent. Who who cares? All I care about is who's leading the freaking, you know, steering the ship. That's all that matters to me. All right? I don't really care about the guy's after-hours antics. I don't give a, a hoot about that. What I care about is the person in charge know what the heck they're doing. 
Well, the person in charge right now in this country has no clue what they're doing. They're running the ship into the, uh, you're on the Titanic right now, and you're going to be part of the fiasco. It's already happening. And the reason I'm revved up about this is because the media machine, the media machine brainwashed tons of people to believe that different powers to be would have a so much better agenda than has run the country into the ground. But yet the midterms show that borderline, half the people of the country think it's all good and great. But the failure of the energy policies, the failure, you're paying failure. You're paying more money than your lifetime for energy, for food, for goods and services. How is this build back better economy going for everybody? But you have people that will argue with you that because a guy named Donald Trump made them mad, they don't want nothing to do with them, and they'd rather pay for higher price gas, higher price for cars, higher price for homes, higher price for food, higher price for labor, and the list goes on and on and on. And I'm not here to say that the guy that was in power before, would, some of these things wouldn't would play out. But at the same time, you had other powers to be that are in power now that told you it would be better. A failure beyond failure. You can go through the list of this country right now of the failures. Have you heard about the railroad strike that's upon our doorstep? Yeah, right now, CSX and all the big rail guys, they've been arguing back and forth on you know their union uh, voting on what they feel is right and wrong. And it isn't so much about the, the pay. It isn't about the pay. It's about the respect and the treatment to others what's going on more so than ever. But wait a second. This power to be told us who's making everybody happy. And then it would make sure everybody got equal, you know, social justice, right? Here's your major railroad. If it shuts down, I think at the last minute the deal will be struck. But right now, where it's going, the union's uh, deal that's been going back and forth with the Biden administration, they rejected it. Some of the union accepted it, but the majority of the union rejected it. So on our doorstep is a major railroad shutdown. Once again, could happen. I don't think it'd be long served, but if it is, if it is, you want to talk about a huge failure of another failure? If anybody's ordered a car that needs, has been built at the factory and you want it to be delivered to your dealership, if they, this rail thing takes any hold and it lasts for a few weeks to, to whatever time frame, oh my gosh, you're even another few more months from getting your car that was just built and finished sitting at the lot. Yeah, I know tons of those stories. I know stories of people's cars are sitting at the dealer's manufacturing facility. Can't get it. Can't get it because it's transportation problems. But you hear about the failure of all the truck drivers now. There's videos out there, but truck drivers are struggling. I mean, it's just, but it's the same, it's the same message. It's like repeat, 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 repeat. There are the biggest YouTubers out there that I see right now. It's a repeat conversation every day. Repeat, 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 repeat. It's the same conversation, just worded differently on how the housing market's going to go broke. Okay, I've heard that for last year. How fuel prices are going to go through the roof. Well, I've heard that for last year. But it's the same, same conversation. How the stock market's going to go broke. I've heard that same message for last year. Uh, how people are losing all their jobs. Well, I've heard that same message for like, the last year. I mean, it's incredible how some YouTube guys have these incredible channels where they get 20, 30,000 hits, 100,000 hits on their video. And it's the same conversation they had six months ago, telling everybody how it's all going to be dire circumstances and the failure of this country is upon our doorstep and it's happening. Failure, failure, failure. What the heck? Is anybody really waking up? So what's going on in this country by the governing body and governing powers that even the businesses that more than ever just accept the failure mode? Oh, well, oh, well, can't get it. Oh, well, oh, well, hey, that's the price. It is what it is. Oh, we don't have any. Oh, well, you know, well, whatever. Uh, failure, failure, failure. But it's OK. And that's the that's the danger. It's society's evolving into accepting failure. Because the powers to be are saying, hey, suck it up, buttercup. It's the way it is. Oh, I know I preached to you that I'd be the better guy. I know I preached to you that we'd have a better powers to be in this country. But hey, hey, just just, just get away from me and go home and don't worry about it. It'd be okay, all right? In fact, reelect me again, would you? Come on. And, and what's the problem with all you, you people out there, right? Here, think this through. We have a sitting power and sitting bodies wanting to elect, wanting to bring 87,000 more tax auditors to the IRS. Okay, that's huge sums of money on the taxpayer's dime to pay these people's payrolls 
for the for the IRS. And I'm not here. This is not this is not a message, and I'm not about supporting the IRS. What I'm saying to you is, think this through. This administration wants to get 87,000 more IRS audit, auditors to go inspect everybody's bank accounts and tax returns, but yet at the border, they want nothing to do with hiring 87,000 um, police officers or border, border, border patrol agents at the border. I mean, just stop for a second. Just think what I just said to you. 87,000 more IRS agents is what the Democratic Party is trying to accomplish for more heavy audits. But when it comes to border control and security, they, don't, they want to get rid of, rid of the people. So here's the underlying message. They want more illegals to come in this country so they can have more auditors to go after every citizen, American citizen to round up every penny they can to support all these illegals. I mean, does anybody figure this stuff out? I mean, it's beyond believable how people argue, oh, it's a good thing that the IRS is going to have 87,000 more agents to go audit people and to catch any discrepancies and collect more money. But the Border Patrol, let's just get rid of, let's not spend any money at the border. Let's just really get rid of Border Patrol agents and let more illegals come here to ride off your tax dollars that the IRS is going to suck, you know, suck every penny they can at any individual that's a citizen. You know, the illegals aren't citizens. Get this. The Washington, D.C. has in a bill right now, 11 to like one favoritism. They're going to pass a bill that if you're a illegal, you're illegal, you're not a legal citizen in this country, that if, that if you live in D.C., this is for state elections, or I should say for local elections only. It's kind of a vague bill to me because it's just, it, I think it just applies to D.C. But the implications are it'll go somewhere else. That's how this stuff works. They'll use D.C. as the foundation. So for D.C., they're going to pass a, a bill that says if anybody comes from anywhere in this world and they can show residence for 30 days in the District of Columbia, they automatically get the right to vote in the District of Columbia. They don't have to be a citizen. Okay, so that, they just have to prove. So, so, it's, so you say to yourself, yeah, well, who cares? The District of Columbia can't vote for the, the major elections anyways. So wait, what's the big deal? Well, it's a business model. It's a business model they're going to create to then put into New York City, which New York City already wants to do this stuff. And then they want to put it in San Francisco and Los Angeles. And so then you have, you have literally the corruption of the corruption behind corruption of illegals coming to this country to buddy up with certain agendas to be passed to support the corruption. Be unbelievable. I mean, just but failure. It's a failure system that's being designed. But yet, individuals will sit here and argue, well, I'm going to vote this party because I voted this party my whole life. It's like, it doesn't work that way anymore. It doesn't, it just, sadly, you're voting for failures. And more than ever in our society, right now, I mean, truly, what is going on with the failure system? It's failures. The food, the, the food stores, I mean, you go to the restaurants, the price for everything has gone through the roof. The service for many businesses has gone down the toilet, so the service sucks. The The attitude of employees to work is borderline, well, be so lucky I even show up for me to work because there's not enough people to work, so I'm going to use that to my advantage. Failure, failure mindset, failure that I can just not have to work today because I can do that because I've got the powers to be because I know that they don't have somebody else to come in and do something. And if they get rid of me, then they're going to be hurting more. So I can just use that to my advantage. But it's just a failure. It's a failure way of working because you're not going to complete your tasks in a timely manner. You just continue to set that up. I mean, it's just look at look at Elon Musk. He just bought up Twitter. The whole message in that Twitter platform is failure, failure. That the whole, there was bots. There was fake accounts. There was... Failure of the advertising. Here's another thing. You know, the, the social media machine more than ever is being, you know, uncovered and how it buddied up with governing bodies to push agendas for voting, for people to be persuaded to vote a certain way because the social media machine totally was a, a movement about brainwashing you to think what is right versus wrong. Just a failure. Another thing of having to persuade people in a devious way to get something done. Beyond believable. Now get this. Elon Musk has created the nuclear battery. 
Yes, this is beyond believable. And once again, I'm not a scientist, so anybody's watching me, they could get into more depth in this because Elon Musk right now has what they call the nuclear diamond battery. Apparently, he is extracting from old nuclear plants the the nuclear material that he's created into a small, like, d size. You know, it's probably bigger than that, but, you know, it's a, like a D-sized battery that has nuclear power in it to give, like, the ultimate of ultimate battery power capability that could run for years. Or, you know, run, it's so it's a little more in-depth than I've been able to, you know, understand because I saw a video of it yesterday, so I'm sure somebody who watch my channel is get more in-depth. It's called NDB, Nuclear Diamond Battery. It's the next big thing a lot of us trying to master on putting it in cars, but I think if it's really nuclear... And they're saying it's not harmful to mankind because it's such a small trace of nuclear. In a way, it's it's designed and blah, blah, blah. Kind of like diamonds. Apparently, there's nuclear something that they're mixed with gases to create uh, the fake diamonds. And so, so anyways, I'm just thinking to myself, okay, so the car crashes and it catches on fire. You're telling me those nuclear batteries aren't going to be a problem? I don't know a lot about it. I just kind of saw a video on it yesterday. The NDB, Nuclear Diamond Battery. This is Elon Musk's next major accomplishment in battery technology. And if something he masters, apparently it's going to just overnight going to change the range of these cars because of the nuclear, you know, infrastructure of the battery. But at the same time, oh my gosh, you just think, huh, now you've got nuclear material under you in your car? I mean, for the people out there that aren't really the big battery people, it's pretty crazy. These battery packs, just pack, just picture D-sized batteries that are just thousands in, like, my Ford F-150 truck or, like, the Mach-E GT Mustang I have. Just picture those little D batteries all, like, soldered together in, in like, in clusters because they have, like, battery packs that are all, you know, they, just picture how many D-sized batteries could you put in the length of the underbody of a, a, a Ford F-150 truck, like in a big-ass box, right? I mean, so that's really what you have in your car, just, you know, D-sized batteries that are powering down the road that are your uh, lithium batteries. It's pretty cool, actually, but heavy as heck. But anyway, so, there, so there's that. So is that going to be a failure? I don't know. All right. I've talked about a lot of stuff. It kind of gets all political, and I know that. But at the same time... It's sad to me as an individual that, that we're witnessing more than ever the divisions of our country. And the division of our country really seems to support failures. I mean, I'm sorry. It's failures. This this sitting administration is running this country into the ground. And China now, China knows. I mean, there's so much China stuff going on right now that people just don't understand. Even I don't. It's just in depth for what China is manipulating and just a devious, really, you know, bad, I mean, you know, at one point, the Chinese have done a lot of stuff for this country to a degree, but at the same time, they've done so much bad, on the other hand, that's created failures. I mean, the, the pandemic in itself, huge failure, huge failure of, of how that's all played out, how it's been handled. It's just created so many failures. You know, once again, the pandemic, you know how many businesses failed? You know, I know. I mean, and I'm no idiot to life. There are so many people that have had incredible success. Yes, yes, I know that. But where we are today, the, the message for me is turn on the TV and turn on YouTube channels and you see the majority of where we are right now in this country is this, the conversation of failure. That's, that's the accepted kind of way of looking at things is that it's failure. Failure. So, uh. That's the theme for today. Heading out to Tennessee tomorrow. Now I'm down down south. Not as easy to make the videos, so who knows if I'll be making any real morning conversation videos. You know, it's possible. I don't know. So, uh, so you know, once again, anybody watch my channel, appreciate the support. And yeah, I mean, it's about cars and trucks and motorcycles and and the fun. But at the same time, for me, I just can't hold back the what I'm witnessing is an individual that's been around this earth longer than a lot of people and not as long as a lot of other people, but it's just the common sense mode, and it just blows me away that where we are 
in this uh, media machine. And that's what Elon Musk has done. He's totally exposed on how corrupt the social media machine is. Mark Zuckerberg, that guy, that guy is a, that guy to me is a pervert, okay? That guy's your peeping Tom. This guy's made a bloody fortune off of spying off of you. It's ridiculous, beyond ridiculous. How, how the guy's not in prison? You know, why is this guy not in jail? I mean, I just don't understand. But I do understand, because it's money. It's all about the money factor. And the politicians are all about the money grab, sadly. So for anybody here arguing, just talking to talk about Trump, you know, don't get me wrong. I think Trump had the basic great idea of this country. But then the guy can't, the guy can't, the guy, he's not, you, you wouldn't want to hang out with the guy. I mean, that's, the, that's what you got to stop and say to yourself is it's one thing to find somebody in charge that knows how to handle things. But then the media machine just ratchets everything up. Or they, they want you to feel like you have to hang out with a guy. I don't know about you, but most people don't want to hang out with their boss of the company. I mean, sincerely. You know, that's just how we are. I mean, all of us have our challenges. And, and it's just like your customers. I guarantee if you're an individual who has customers, you want to do business with them. But do you want to hang out with their type of social you know, lifestyle? You don't. But for some reason, the media machine brainwashes people that you have a sitting president that tries to do things, but then they take it to the sidestep of where they want you to think that you got to go hang out with him in the after hours and enjoy his social life. I'm sorry. I don't want anything to do with that. I mean, but that's what the social media machine has created. They want, they, they want you to be this, create this fake individual. The failure. The social media machine is a total failure because what, look what it's done to this country. And look what it's continuing to do to this country. And look what it's doing to the younger generation. So failure. So yeah, that's the word of the day, and it's rightly used. And sadly, the failures are just beginning. Yeah, I think that the failures are just now kind of starting to happen, but who knows? I don't know. Hey, everybody. What a great conversation, right? It's the happy holiday week. Get together with family. Yeah, how does that all play out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the failures of the fail. Yeah, you hear those stories. Get together and how long does the conversation last? In turn, it goes to the failure conversations, and you got to disappear. You got to leave early, right? Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't. Yeah, I have family. I get all that stuff. So, uh, fine line there, that love and hate, right? So, hey everybody, thanks for watching my channel, and I hope everybody's gonna have a really great week, Thanksgiving week. That is, I'm getting ready to get all my work done, get my truck and trailer. You know, do I take the two door race truck or do I take the Raptor? That damn race truck is so much fun. It is. I'm blown away. That thing feels like it has more than 400 horsepower. What is what is that all about? That makes. I mean, that thing is so fast. So yeah. So yeah. The kid wants to ride the race truck. Let me tell you what. That thing's noisy. I mean, six seven hours is just bah, You know, then you're bouncing up and down. Ah, I mean, I don't know. Farmy says just let her drive the race truck to get her fun out of it. And I'll take the Raptor. Part of me says to do that, but the damn traffic sucks coming back. So, I don't know. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching, and God bless.